Hello, this is K1, back for more Kerbal Space Program with my buddy Raider Man. I said your name Hello. this time. Hello, everyone. And it's time to deviate from ISS proper. I'm still going to be building it, but I'm going to build some stuff that's not supposed to be on it. Ooh. That is, I'm taking the Russian segment and uh, basically building Mir onto it. So as with the first segment of the original mirror, the Cavant 1 will be our first module here. <laughs> and what is the launch stack today? <laughs> the launch stack is the standard go-to stack for launching heavy things by Russia, and that is the Proton K. Check your orbit first. Yes. I was actually going to do that. <laughs> oh, and there's the uh, discarded stage that we left. It's falling behind the station. I don't suppose it's got any fuel left. Nope. Well, even if it did, it doesn't have any control, so I can't really do anything with it. Station's in the right spot. It would help if I actually targeted it. Hmm. Max thrust, and here we go. Takes a little while to get started. And my screen has promptly frozen up on me, but it will probably address itself in short order. So the Proton K go. itself is a three-stage vehicle. The bottom stage with a cluster of six engines, as we see. These fins don't na uh, naturally go with it, but I want some extra stability. Yeah, we've seen what happens when we don't have the fins. This thing shimmies all over the place. Well, the last couple of launch stacks have shimmied, with the exception of the Soyuz stack, which was the last occasion. Shimmy, shimmy, cocoa pop, shimmy, shimmy, rock. Sorry. Yeah, seriously, uh, the uh, the heavy lift cargo truck that K1 put together does not want to stay stable. Probably just because it's got too much stuff in it. And it's big and heavy. And you can always tell one big difference between a Russian or other Asian country vehicle and an American vehicle is their stage skirts are often like these cage configurations instead of fully enclosed. Why is that? Um, probably so they could uh, activate the engines with that, uh, during trans stage without it having to be so far away, so you don't have too much period of non-thrust. Ah. Plus, it would also help if not all of the clamps released, uh, the engines would finally break it free eventually, but by then, as evidence with um, part of the Radio Odyssey show uh, about a week and a half ago, um, I, I believe it was Soyuz 7KT number 39, by that point, your course has deviated so much it triggers an abort anyway. Mm. 7KT number 39. What the heck kind of designation is that? Well, it never reached orbit, so it didn't get called Soyuz 18. They still use that scheme, don't they? Yeah. Uh, so far, the only, the only manned or man-rated vehicle that didn't reach orbit that retained its uh, flight number was Apollo 1. And that was out of respect for the men who perished. I'm not going to bother with that whole gravity turn thing again because I just can't seem to make it work. I tried again during my test launch and it kept wanting, it kept wanting to tilt downward instead of over. But I think we're high enough off or out of the atmosphere to make our full turn now. Now, how does this particular vehicle, uh, what is the staging sequence for it? How does that work? Um, well, as soon as this engine quits. Hmm. Center stage goes as that whole bottom segment goes away. It looks like it was. It's like a, like a cluster that's supposed to separate, but it's all built together into one. 
uh, one combination, kind of like the Saturn 1B. This thing nice. launches rather slow. The station's passed overhead already. What you drinking? Water. Oh, I don't drink that crap. You know, I kind of don't want to leave the room while you're uh, doing this utterly fascinating uh, putting stuff into orbit stuff. Stuffing stuff together into a big pile of stuff. Uh-huh. Let's go with that. Yeah, this thing moves pretty slow. Bye-bye, <laughs> station. <laughs> But it's not like I have to catch up from the other side of the planet this time. That's yeah, true. And as long as I rendezvous on the day side, I am okay. We end up on the night side, then I'm guessing we have problems. Yeah, because guess what I forgot to put on this thing? Solar hangings? Uh, lights. <laughs> I know you remind me every time, and every time I forget. K1? Mm -hmm. Come here. Come here. No. Ow. Ow. Aziz, light! Alrighty. Next stage. Oh wait, we've got one more? Yep, it's a three-stage uh, rocket. That thing probably does not have much fuel in it, that third stage. Well, it doesn't burn through it uh, too extremely fast. Well, never mind, it's burning pretty fast. But it's mostly just the kicker stage to get us into orbit. Otherwise, you'll come back down for a splashdown in the water. Yep. But thankfully, the the nose shroud of this vehicle has engines of its own as well. Or there's there's a secondary nose shroud under that shroud. Ah. Oh. Excuse me. Don't do that. It's been a slow day. Hey, sometimes you want Monday to be slow. Yeah, just not slow enough to the point where I feel like I, I should go to bed, you know? That's too slow. Now, how to round out this orbit without waiting until the apogee? Sometimes point straight down, it'll do the trick. And one could hope. Point straight toward the Earth. My apogee goes down, my perigee goes up. Man, it's counterintuitive. You're firing straight at the planet. You wouldn't expect that to actually work. But then again, uh, this is orbital mechanics and space physics, so what doesn't look right to the eye actually does work on paper and in practice. Although I'm noticing I am way too low. I, I maneuvered into orbit as if I was having to catch up to the station from a long way away. But it looks like I will get a rendezvous over there on the night side, but not too horribly. It's more of like a... I'm going to say it again. Huh? It's more like a um, get within range on the night side and then close out and rendezvous over here on the day side. I'm going to say it again anyways. Aziz, light! Hmm? Oops. Wrong button. I do want to ditch... 
the shroud, though. He keeps hitting the wrong buttons. It happens to the best of us. So get okay, our soul so wings out. What does this module do? Well, this module with the solar wings is essentially just the tug for the Cavant 1, which is this module right here. Only about that much of it will stay on the station. The rest of this will go back to burn up. So you basically got two stages worth of rocket here. Huh. Unusually complex for the usually simplistic Russians. Yeah. So I pass the station again. It will catch up as I go up and over. I'm going to have more junk at the station's level after I swore I wouldn't do that. Oh, I don't suppose you can manage to keep enough fuel in the two stages there to do a, to at least start a deorbit. Well, there's nothing I can do with the bottom stage because it didn't have any control. So once I use it up, it's it's gone. I well, could always ram it with the uh, other part. I don't know if that's same do problem. Good. No control. Bugger. All right, so I'm guessing all the control is in Cavant. Station is actually overhead. Oh, that's interesting. So this means the inclination of the discarded stage will not match up with the stations. So I don't have to worry about that. So I'm going to go ahead and ditch it. Whoops. I think my control is backwards Goosey. here. Goosey. Not so much goosey, it's just backward. Uh -huh. Alright, and give a little kick. What do you mean I'm backwards? You flea bitten furball! Oh my, what have you done? I'm backwards! Okay, that gives me a rendezvous of 0.6 on the day side. See if I can squeeze a little more out of that. Three, two, one, zero. Ta da! But at this point, this is the entire rendezvous stack. And once I've connected this module to the station, this one will undock and go its merry way to deorbit. So theoretically, this is going to be simple. Theoretically. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> he had to say it. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of uh, of my fellow man, I apologize for uh, K1 invoking the wrath of Murphy. Okay, let's see if we can actually see anything. Not quite. So let's turn ourselves around. We're approaching at 12 meters per second. So not extremely fast. Do we know what we're going to launch next time? Well, I'm going to need some more fuel for the station. So once this thing is docked and exposes its docking port, it's going to be ready for a progress. Do, do the progress spacecraft have headlights? I will put one on it. 
seriously, we're not, we're not even trying to dock this thing on the night side. We just want the light so that we can see roughly where the ready station is so we don't bounce off into it or something. Well, it doesn't really matter in this case because there it is, and there's the sun. But for our one of our uh, earlier docking attempts, yeah, having a headlight would have been very much welcome, I think. Yeah... has a tendency to happen. Now I'm gonna try and orient this thing properly. So that way I can control what I'm doing a little bit better. All right, 500 meters. Russian segment is on the left. You're closing fast. You might want to apply a braking thrust at some point. Well, I'm going to give myself a side thrust so there's no collision danger. And then I'll line up with my direction of flight. too fast. There we go. Yeah, uh, visions of progress colliding with mirror. Understandably, I get a little uh, worried. Hmm? Really, you're turning off your approach radar. <laughs> they rolled out the red carpet for Murphy on that one. Hmm? And, and for our uh, listening and uh, viewing angles, for the for the people who are going to see this, please, do you recall, perchance, what mission that was? Uh, I'm not sure which progress it was specifically. I do know that it crashed into the Spectre module, which was basically the, uh, the American work module on Mir and rendered and, it uninhabitable for the remainder of the station's lifespan. And of course they had an American on hand at the time. I can just picture his oh shtaco reaction. My stuff is in there! Not even that! Okay. So we are static with the station. Trying to get us in closer. And I'm going to line us up. And I'm aiming for that back port of Svedzda right there. have to keep reminding myself that these things don't exactly turn on a dime like your typical Type 8 shuttlecraft. Uh, nope. More apt description, wounded buffalo. Well, because you don't exactly have that little thing called inertial dampeners. You can't just, like, do a barrel roll or Tyken's turn or... Uh... Or what Other have you. insane maneuver. And I don't know if you can hear my mouse clicks. So if you can, I do apologize. Oh, I hear nothing. Except the sound of my computer's fan. Bzzz. Yours or mine? Mine. All right. Set target on that port there. Even ourselves out. There's a small port I made for expansions on the underside. So actually, I'm going to tilt this around the other direction. I love how I can see my shadow on uh, on the station <laughs> panels. 
almost looks like space ballet. Da 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 prum 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 prum. I can't believe I just put that in his head. Okie dokie. I think I'm whoops. Lined up proper now. <clears throat> Just about. All right, I'm gonna need to boost up, not down. I can turn that off. And this is where we surrender entirely to the nav ball. Otherwise known as the meatball. Or the eight ball. Magic eight ball. <laughs> or the blue ball, however you uh, however you prefer it. Yeah, well, given uh, given uh, the absolute hell that was docking the one module, the Magic Eight Ball is a more apt description. And seriously, that thing did not want to cooperate at all. Well, this one's proving a bit more cooperative. By far. <laughs> so while traditionally on ISS, this port on the back of Svezda remains uh, open for cargo craft. I'm going to permanently close that up so the back of Kvent here will be that port. Now the goal is to find out where my proper separation part is. It is this one right here See if it'll let me do it. Through the shroud. It doesn't look like it's gonna. So, things might go wrong here. So, wish me luck. Hi! Hi, Murphy! How are ya, buddy old pal? Actually, let's do this. Just to be safe. Trigger. Ah, it worked. Oh, what do you know? We are now separated. We now have an exposed docking port. First time I tried it, it actually left the um, decoupler attached, so I had to flip that around. And Ow. As I scoot this down, it wants to flip a little bit since it lost the mass, but that's no big deal. Well, that's the decoupler behind, huh? We now see Cavent 1 attached to ISS in basically what is becoming a makeshift mirror. All right, I got a question for you. Can that the super truck of yours carry up nothing but fuel in its cargo bays? Um, it could, but that'd be kind of pointless anyway. Well, I was going to say, why not top off all of your fuel stores if you could? Well, that's what progress is for. Are we doing that tonight or on another occasion? We are doing that tonight because I want to put Kavant to use. <laughs> So my very first order of business is to deorbit this drone craft here. Allow me a evil little. <laughs> and we can see where the Cavant one was. Kind of like how uh, how Beam was tucked inside the dragon in the most recent visit to the real ISS. <laughs> Orbit. And for those who don't know what beam is, greater, what is beam? Beam, beam, beam. John Blank? Yeah. 
the Bigelow expandable module. Yeah, <laughs> I saw that. It was basically the first test of a man-rated inflatable module in otherwise space. It's not very big. A, otherwise known as a space-rated blow-up bouncy house. Yes, the attempt of making habitable modules that are lighter weight so you could expand a bigger module with a smaller space. Of course, uh, if they manage to make it work, this could also make future manned missions to Mars a lot easier as well. I believe that is the idea, but call me old-fashioned. I like the pre-made, constructed craft hulls, you know? I think a combination of the two technologies would uh, probably be a good idea, kind of like what they did on the Martian. I still have not seen that. You would like it. Well, I'm sure I would. It took me a year and a half to see Gravity. It took me a year and a half to see Interstellar. So it's probably half a year yet before I finally see the Martian. My friend, you need some serious movie help. I know. And I'm forever kicking myself for not uh, seeing Gravity when I was in the theater when I had the chance. And these engines don't really provide a whole lot of kick. they got to burn for quite a while to do, well, anything. So, taking bets on if we're going to land in the ocean or in the water? Or, I mean, in the ocean or on the land this time. What do you think? <laughs> Water splashed down good. How much fuel's left? Oh, I got a whole bunch of fuel, but... I don't suppose there's any chance of making the engine overheat and go boom. Doubt it. I don't suppose we could fire the engine off anyways, uh, just for the sake of uh, accelerating the descent. Well, we're getting some heat. Well, let's see if those solar arrays go. They will. I'm actually going to hit land again. <laughs> oh. oh, oh, oh. Whoop. Whoa. There went one wing. With a big explosion, no less. Yeah, I don't believe it. This big, massive blue ocean. There's a tiny little bit of land. And you're going to hit the tiny little bit of land. Or I might fly right past it. You know, I can see Murphy rooting for that land. Whoa. Come on, burn up. Burn up. Big boom. Jimmy want big boom. Boom! And <laughs> <laughs> we, <laughs> we have just the decoupler. <laughs> Oh, wow! <laughs> These things are sturdy. They're built to last. <laughs> this thing is determined to give you the digital finger, isn't it? Yep. <laughs> and like I said, hey, look, look what's going to happen. I'm going to hit the land. <laughs> I need help! <laughs> Eventually, this thing's not falling very fast. It's taking its sweet time. <laughs> I wonder, will this thing blow up if it hits? I mean, everything else on the spacecraft seems to have blown up. Hmm. Maybe it'll just bounce right off. <laughs> Either way, it'd be amusing. <laughs> Come on. Show me land. That the Mariner hard. wants to see dry land. <whistles> nope. It Disappeared exploded. Poof. It exploded. <laughs> well, it should. It's basically nothing but separation charges. 
Hey, anything explodes if you hit it with enough force. <laughs> Even you. I'm sorry, but I'll just get endless amusement. Every single part of this spacecraft, when it came down, exploded. Now, it's time to take the progress into the VAB for a bit. And trying to move the chair carefully without making a whole lot of noise. Because I know you're not going to let me get away without putting some lights on this thing. You'd be correct. Okay. Up. Oh, it's got some light. Very good. So actually, I'm going to exit that. Don't save, because I want to keep everything in proper order. But that sort of gave away what the progress is for those who do not know. It's basically a heavily modified Soyuz. Well, that's what it originally started out as in the first place. Yeah, the first thing we, no uh, we notice is missing is the escape tower. Yeah, that's and a big clue, but that's almost the exact same identical launch stack, right? Yep. But why do we not have an, an escape tower? Well, because we don't have any crew to have to escape. Now, if this was a proper man-rated vehicle, of course there'd be an escape tower of some kind on it. There's another piece of debris. What is that? What is like, it? I don't know. It's like right with the station. Or huh. trailing just behind. Well, suppose you can... Uh... Or, or that might be... Never mind, what? it was that other stage. The ascension stage from our uh, failed attempt at using the maneuvering tug? No, the um, uh, the third stage from the thing I just put up. Oh, well, hopefully that thing runs out of fuel on its own. <laughs> well, fuel's not the problem. The orbits, excuse me. It's too high. Uh, I don't suppose we could send up our failed tug for the specific purpose of grabbing it and then deorbiting? Well, I don't know. At some point I might design a, uh, a trash cleaner of sort. <coughs> that was what I just suggested, but okay. Look at it go. So we've got our Soyuz stack. So progress is basically an unmanned Soyuz that's built to carry cargo and fuel and other supplies up to the station. Originally for the Salyut program, but still still runs to this day for ISS. I believe that is, we're what, A191, O1, 11? We're about 45 years into that. <coughs> well, I'll wait, correction. Um, 40. Because Salyut 6 wasn't until... 78, I think. So it's less than, we're like 38 years. Still, it's quite a service record. Any vehicle to run successfully for such a long period of time deserves yes, yes, yes. recognition. Indeed, indeed, indeed. get ourselves tilted. And as we see in the middle here, they still have the, the graded stage, as I mentioned before. Uh-huh. Graded, gated, however. However you want to look at it. Fence. Looks like fencing. <laughs> uh, you don't want to be sword fighting in space. No, 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 the metal I fence. know, I'm just kidding. You can beat me up for that one later. Okay, I've noticed that this thing wants to kind of wobble a little too. Well, it's because it's, it's fighting the air. Blossom!
Okay, I... Hmm. The station always passes me. I seem to be doing that a lot these days. Stop yeah, hitting your head. Some, somebody forgot to uh, properly ensure uh, proper orbital rendezvous position again, I see. <clears throat> well, hey, at least I'm not chasing it around the planet for 20 orbits. Yeah, that's just very true. The first time I saw him put a rocket up uh, and attempt to dot rendezvous and then dot with something, yeah, well, he indeed and did end up doing that. Unfortunately, there's no recording, so. <laughs> and before the core stage exhausts its fuel, let's ditch these. And we get our glimpse of the pretty Soyuz derivative. At some point, I wish someone would make a mod of the uh, the Shinzu and Long March. <coughs> oh, there we go. Give ourselves a little puff. Whoopsie. Well, um, hmm. I hit the wrong button. Okay, well, we'll see how well um, progress can run even on its own. This will be a test. Wrong button, he says. Well, hey, the good news is that both of those uh, stages are now going to end up uh, burning up instead of stuck in orbit. Wings, there we go. So there's some uh, some good news in that, I'd like to think. Uh, we are making orbit. Yeah. This is going to be real dicey, though. I don't know how much fuel you're going to have left. <clears throat> well, let's see. I'm at 13.25 of 14.50. Uh, isn't the monopropellant what the station needs? Yeah... But hey, the crew still needs something to throw their trash in, so... What? That's basically Hi, what the progress does. Hi, Murphy. I knew that first mission went too smoothly. How are you, good buddy, good pal? Okay. I'm going to get a... Rendezvous on the night side just to beat the um, beat the velocity and then by the time we close in the rest we'll be in the day side again. So huzzah. That's assuming I don't get the separation down even less than that. We're down to 21 and a half, 21. See, this is why I need a team of mathematicians to plot out my course for me. This would be helpful. <laughs> but then where's the fun in that? And of course, it's a dreaded night side uh, rendezvous. I don't suppose you have located the switch for turning on the headlight. Ah, there we are. Uh, switch for turning on the headlight is the light switch. <laughs> I know, kind of obvious, huh? Okay, we're down to 17. And that ascending note, or that uh, intersect is moving a little to the left like we want it to. Oh, no, 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 Unskippable ad. <laughs> Unfortunately. You can't... You can't skip this guy, Coad, because it's already over. 
Yeah, I do sincerely apologize for that. No, it could have been worse. You shouldn't have one of your porn yeah. sites up. I was going to say it could have been folk music. Now I'm hearing uh, that yodeling guy from Price is Right in my head. Or that. <laughs> Thank you for putting that back in my head. <laughs> what is wrong with you? My first thought would be a lot. Okay, looks like we're going to get this down about 10 kilometers here. All right, what's your fuel status? Fuel status looks to be about 90%. Huh. Let's see if I can see the station yet. It's overhead and in the distance. It's too far for radar as of yet. So let's speed up. Okay, overhead and toward Mun there. Oh, it'd help if I turned my radar back on. There you are. Yeah, that would help. Yeah, it'd help just a little. Uh huh. Line up with our direction. Thankfully, there are a few extra stars in the night sky. Make it easier to kind of see what you're doing in silhouette. Of course, wouldn't that be cool if you could see like the whole like galactic cloud in the sky at night? Alrighty. I have to do a fairly interesting maneuver here since I'm still a bit outside of the orbit track. But let's see what my orbit looks like as soon as I cancel this out. Um, yep, I'm pretty darn below. Any chance of closing that gap? Well, that's going to be my goal. So, I'm going to see if I can actually go toward my target and do what I'm not supposed to do in orbital flight. What I need to do is ah, there we are. Just bring that separation down. See if I can get it ah on the other side where I want it. Come on, big boy. I want the separation to go down. Separation go down. Okay, it's not really going down that much, is it? Well, Stacco. Well, we can still salvage this. We're not lost yet. I'd like to retain at least 70% of our uh, motor propellant if possible. <clears throat> ah. So 
Recuperation is dropping. That is a good thing. And look at that. We're going to be on the day side. Yay! Phew! Okay. <coughs> and keep in mind the actual progress didn't actually have anyone to fly it. It's all automatic. Well, roughly anyway. Yeah, of course it's less so if they turn off the docking radar. Okay. I, I, I that is one of those really you know mm, squeaky chair squeaky chair squeaky chair well it's not really their fault because they're oh look at that um the radar and the operation software and the personnel were all from a country that no longer was part of russia after the soviet union broke up and with all the um, economic sanctions on the country, things just got a little, little sucky. So you turn off the radar and play, forgive the pun, Russian roulette. I'm sorry, but when safety in the space program is concerned, economic sanctions, which again falls down to politics, needs to take a back seat. Now, let's see if we can see this station at max distance. It should pop into view at any moment. Correct me if I'm wrong, but wasn't this progress already in flight before all of this happened? Um, no. Hmm. Huh. They shouldn't have flown then. Well, what can you do? Alrighty, so I'm coming up in the wrong direction, it looks like, so I'm going to give a burst to come in on the Russian side, or at least what I think is the Russian side from my vantage point. How far away are we? 1.4 kilometers. And this time we're approaching to where we can actually see the darn thing's wings as we approach. Clickety clickety. So no need for the the headlight we made sure was on it. But I guess better to have it and not need it, right? Yeah. As said, uh, perhaps we can remap the stage separation uh, button again, perhaps? Maybe? I don't know. Put it on something you're not likely to hit by accident. Well, I assumed engine activation even though my engine was already activated. So yeah, that was my fault. But hey, we're... We're at about 70% fuel. But all things considered, we did pretty good. And we're on approach to the Russian side. I can already see Kavant over there. We're down to about 5 meters per second. So, hey, we're doing good. Despite the little snafu. <laughs> little. Tough little ship little. <laughs> so instead of snafu, we're just sn. Yeah, that was lame, I know. Uh. But situation is normal. Um, 
modify our approach. And we're doing good. We are just over 300 meters. And we can already identify just about everything on the station now. You can see node 2 and 3, uh, Destiny, Unity, Zarya, Svedzda, and the docking node with the Soyuz. And our target, which is the Kavant. <laughs> and I could see my shadow on the station. <laughs> Again. It's just a pity we can't really get it to where the rotation or the station can rotate at a certain like velocity to always be relative to the surface. Because as soon as you speed up or switch maps or do anything, it like straightens out whatever its spin was. Which is really unavoidable with a game mechanic. Okie doke. Tilt ourselves up. Let's target the docking port drogue. As we drift our way over Check that rotation. I am. Check the rotation. Don't waddle your wings. <laughs> We're good. Alrighty, and we're back on the nav ball. Oh, magic eight ball, are we going to dock and retain more than 60% of our fuel? Definitely yes. <laughs> <laughs> And we're seeing moonrise over the station. See that? <laughs> or in this case, it'd be moonrise. Which, if if you really think about it, actually makes even more sense. Mm-hmm. Sunrise, moonrise. Yeah, that's lame. I know. Let's turn the light on just for the sake of turning it on. Yep. See? We has lights. You can no longer complain. <laughs> oh wow, that that some pretty powerful light too. Closer, closer, closer. So, dare I say, in this particular series, that the Russian hardware has been more reliable than the American hardware? Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even have to say it. American components, Russian components, all made in Taiwan! <laughs> as 
much as I dislike that movie, it is still surprisingly quotable. <laughs> Slow down our approach, and we got this in the bag. Hello, Mr. Progress. Welcome aboard. Kirklunk! <laughs> And now right. we have a very lopsided station. Transfer some fuel? Oh, uh, let's see. What needs it? I'm going to start with our Zarya. Oh, you have regular fuel, too. Um, but what, you, what needs it? Ah! Let's just put it in there. <laughs> Ta -da! Now the station proper doesn't actually run on normal fuel, it runs on monoprop, but I guess it's like a storage tank for it. Oh, and we've got some more in there. So I guess if I have a vehicle that needs to stop off on its way elsewhere, it can refuel from the station. Of course, if we ever get around to putting up a proper orbital tug module that works, maybe we can make it use what's left of the liquid fuel. I don't know. Well, I did have an idea about that. Um, it'll still be a monoprop tug, but I had an idea on how to fix the the thrusters, where to put them, and instead of using it to maneuver stuff, I basically just use it to hold the stuff in place and use the the big cargo truck maneuver around it. <laughs> and let's ref refuel our Soyuz because it is our lifeboat. Okay, we've um, pretty much got that polished off here. We Very good leave. with the hiccups. Oh, I drew everything out of, out of Kavant. That's okay, I don't need Kavant for anything. And I think about 200 monoprops should be good enough to get progress back down to burn up. Let's send her off. First, I'm going to send... Oh, oh! Secure the module. Um, hmm. Let's see, where is she currently? She is in Cupola. So let's move her over. Well, you know what? I can't perform EVAs because I don't have... I guess she'll wait in here. I don't have an airlock anywhere on this station. All right. That's what we're putting up next. That's gonna be one. That's gonna be my next goal. Okay then. And look, you've got two ports right underneath the solar array truss that you can use for that. At some point, I'm gonna need to sturdy the attachment between um, between Cavant and the station, but I'm need, gonna need to go EVA for that. So that's gonna be the next uh, the next goal. Whether I get a airlock on it or not, the truck has a hatch of its own. Idea. Send up an Apollo. Well, that's the that's the command module of the truck. No, I mean send up a straight up Apollo. Uh, I don't have a proper do Apollo docking. Well, I just have to make one. Yeah, Apollo Soyuz docking adapter. You can temporarily dock it to the Russian side. Or as we noticed on the on the big truck that has the Apollo in the nose, I put the um, the standard ISS node. So I basically thought that won't work when it already has worked and not thinking properly. So now we know uh, roughly one possible method to get this done next. So that is the plan. I'm going to send this puppy crashing down. 
and then we'll work on getting our puppy built for next time. Let's hope I got enough fuel to deorbit. I don't want my engine firing too close to the station, though. So, the huh, the Russian side is going to be expanding outward, and the American side is going to be expanding laterally. So this is basically going to become a T-wing and an, and an H-wing in, uh, in one swoop. <laughs> So, let's see our way down to the surface. Are we going to land in darkness? Are we going to land on land? Or are we going to land in water? I'm putting my money on land ho! That does seem to be our lot in life. You know, I'm actually going to see if I can if I can land close to the space center. Because it's about to pass underneath. <laughs> of course, knowing our luck, you'll land right on top of the ruddy thing. Well, no, I'm going way too fast. Wasn't that how the first flight ended? You ended up crashing right on top of the Space Center? Well, I'm not going to hit that peninsula like, like last time. <laughs> I'm gonna see my if I can go steep enough to actually burn up. My personal favorite is the little separator ring that went boom after being the only thing left of the craft to survive reentry. Let's see, where is the space center? Space center is, I can already see it, right over there. About out of fuel in 20, 15, 10. You know what? We might do this. Land on the Space Center? We're pretty darn close. <laughs> How much fuel you got left? None? None. Nope, we're going to fly over it. And I'm going to turn my way. Yeah, turn into the re-entry so the wings go boom again. Nose first. Anything left to rotate? Um, just, um... Oh, it's wanting to autocorrect. Just the reaction wheels. But yeah, we we're, we got pretty close. Yeah. We can we can see the space center and the other landing field over over on the island. Are those wings actually going to survive reentry? Yeah, I think so. Nope, there they go. <laughs> Not with a bang, but a whimper. Is anything even heating up? See, whoever programmed these mods made them a little too sturdy. That's okay. I came down within sight of a space center. Get out that big gulp. We're going for a swim. In the land of capsule base craft, that's close enough. Because as long as you can see where it's coming down, you're close enough to, uh, to recover it. But there's going to be nothing left to recover. Because this thing's going in the drink. Splash! And there went our progress. 
And next up, we're going to try and put some American parts on and hope they work this time. Uh, don't forget the uh, RCS uh, thrusters on the module itself to help make things easier. This is Raiderman and K1. We will see you next time. Have a good one, folks.